now will Christie try for a goal and put Cork into the battle he tries a low hard shot and it's a goal yes it's a goal for Cork and it's scored by Christie Ring I expect there will always be arguments as to who was the greatest participant in any particular sphere and certainly there will be arguments as to who is the greatest hurler but I believe that the general consensus is that Christy Ring was the greatest and best hurler of all time and I fully subscribe to that point of view. By any standard Christy Ring was a remarkable sportsman, a gifted hurler, above average footballer and in latter years an enthusiastic squash player but hurling, of course, was his first and real love in sport. He established himself as the greatest hurler of the modern age during an extraordinary career that stretched over an astonishing period of 25 years, from the day when he first played minor for Cork in 1938 until his last inter-county match in 1963. He was the first to win eight All-Ireland Senior medals. He amassed 18 Railway Cup medals, numerous medals in the National League and Munster Championships. He helped Glen Rovers to success 14 times and he was still winning county championship medals well into his 40s. Unquestionably, it was an astounding career. And as I said, Christie was a minor in 1938 for Cork. So it could be said that professionally, commentator Michael O'Hare grew up with the Cork maestro. Because when Christie was playing minor for the first time in that summer of 38, Michael O'Hare made his debut in front of the microphone around the same time. O'Hare did the commentary on every one of the ten All-Ireland senior finals that Christie played in, as well as all of the Munster finals and the Railway Cup matches. So Michael must have a rich store of memories of this celebrated player. Yes, indeed, it was my pleasure and privilege to grow into manhood in the wonderful days of Christie Ring. And those of us who love hurling, they were wonderful days. It would be very glib on an occasion like this to say that there was a magic about Christy Ring. But if it does sound glib, it is also true. In the 40s and 50s, this man with that magic flick of the wrist, that great sense of position, and that great will always to win, he put something on a hurling field that seldom had been there before. This will to win, well, he didn't know what defeat was. I, I remember one day in Thurless, during a championship game, passing a remark about five minutes from the end of a game, and there's Christy Ring having a very, very poor game by his standards, and as if he heard me, within minutes he had crashed in three goals. He was a natural to try to get Christy to go through his movements and explain how he did this and how he did that, you know, he just couldn't do it because hurling was natural to him. And that natural vivacity and verve that he brought to the game made him the great hurler that he undoubtedly was. But if he was slow to analyze his own natural ability, he was far from slow to analyze opponents. And he brought a new richness to the word ringy in the last few years after he had given up hurling because as a backroom boy with the Cork team he analyzed the opponents he went round to various players and said watch this watch that watch the other and invariably ringy was right a few weeks ago Dennis Collin the Cork star of modern times, said to me that Cork have one thing that none of the others have. Cork have ringy. Well, sadly, no longer have they ringy. A man who brought honour to hurling, to sport and to his country. And indeed, all three will be all the poorer for his passing.